Behind me is the product of my last three videos, a fully working mechanical watch. Except it's not quite complete yet. You see, if you were sold a watch like this in a store, it would die within a couple of days, and the time would most likely be very wrong while it was running. I mean, sure, it ticks forward every second, but I can't add energy to the system or adjust the time at all. That's where the crown comes in. If you've ever seen a real mechanical watch, it's that little spinny knob on the side. Yes, that little knob is responsible for both charging, or winding, the watch, and adjusting the time. If you spin it while it's pressed in, it winds the mainspring, essentially charging the watch. But if you pull it out one notch, it'll engage with the hands, allowing you to change the time. This is what we'll be building today, and by the end, we'll have a fully functional and usable mechanical watch that mimics how it actually works in real life. But first, let's get out of this snapshot, cause uh, I need my building mods. All right, so we're back in 1.21.4, which means no actual watch hands, but we'll get back to that in a second. But the first thing I wanna do is actually address a comment that I got in the last video. So you see these gaps, right? The reason that I put these gaps here is that as the snow golem is moving along the track, even when their head is fully clipped inside a whole bunch of slabs like this, say that he's right here, for instance, when he's pushed over, this next block will actually push them out of the composter. However, I completely forgot about the existence of a block that doesn't have any collision with entities at all, and that is the powdered snow. Let's go ahead and try this out and see if the snow golem actually does pass all the way through. All right, there we go. So we've got our snow golem. If I go ahead, come down here and start our watch one more time. Oh, wait, I should have, yeah, one second, <laughs> one second. Okay, so that wasn't my brightest moment ever, of course. Yeah, the second hand is where we need it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start that back up. And, oh, yep, there we go. It's moving right along. Looks good to me. Now, actually, hold on a second. If I stop it, I wonder if he'll then start to freeze. I assume not. I mean, he's a snow golem after all, right? He wouldn't, he wouldn't freeze, I hope. All right, well, I've been staring for a pretty good long while and doesn't seem to be freezing, so that is... Very good. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it like this. And at the end, I'll try to make all of it maybe uh, covered in this powdered snow. Maybe I'll even increase the level of the composter, right? Maybe, let's see if I chuck pumpkin pies in here, does it actually get higher? Hold on. Okay, 27.125, 0.125, 125, 125. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> it does seem that uh, the collidable area does not change as this thing is filled, which is a little unfortunate, but all right, we'll figure it out at the end, it's all good. So now it's finally time to get to the crown. So if we look back at Chehanovsky's article, you'll see that the crown mechanism is quite complex, but we'll just focus on the parts that it needs to do. First and foremost, I want the crown to directly control the minute hand and not the second hand. This will still be a super slow way to set the time, but not nearly as slow as if we were controlling the second hand. So what happens to the second hand? Well, if we look here, you'll see that the act of pulling out the crown also stops the balance wheel. This is called hacking. Now, of course, this means that our balance wheel needs a little bit of an overhaul to actually make it hackable. So let's do that. Now, there's a couple things that need to happen. Basically, this falling minecart that's trapped in this cobweb is our hairspring. And then this minecart going back and forth is the balance wheel. What I need to do somehow is stop this minecart in midair and then also block the minecart probably with something like a fence gate like this, right? That way this line stays powered, which actually continues to power these two powered rails, but the entire escapement mechanism is stopped for the time being. Now, the one way that I know how to stop an entity in midair is using soul sand. So. If we just go ahead and put a lever down like this, right? And if I just leave this on, you'll see that it does actually get suspended in midair. This is one of those weird Minecraft quirks that I learned from Purplers actually, while we were going through the door world records in the door video. But yeah, if you shove a soul sand into an entity like a minecart or an armor stand or something like that, 
it'll actually get held in place for some reason. However, if our timing is particularly unlucky, there we go. It can fall down and still get held, but it's no longer activating our pressure plate, which is not good. Because now when we stop hacking, it just falls down. So I'm hoping that if I replace this with an armor stand, and of course, you know, push it against this wall here, we can maybe do the hacking thing if we put a piston here with our soul sand here. And if we put a lever on the back of this, let's see if that works out. So we will start our escapement once again. This thing still drops. Oh, actually it loses power sometimes it looks like. What if I replace this with like a four tick repeater? Will that turn off? No, it's off for long enough or for short enough that this actually doesn't turn off, I think. Yeah, okay. See, I I hope this is reliable. All right, let's see what happens when I just boom. Oh, you know what? I should probably also stop the minecart. All right, this is obviously crude, but there we go. It stopped. You can see that this is no longer falling. Oh, now let's try to stop this at a worse spot. Maybe like... Okay, it's still activating the pressure plate. That's good news. Oh, interesting. It did get pushed up like last second that time. You know, I think I'm just gonna have to test this a lot to see how reliable it really is. But you can see that in most spots, it does get stopped in midair, right? So, there we go. Yeah, jury's out, honestly, on how reliable this is going to be. But I'm actually pretty hopeful, I think. But hey, I mean, this is technically hacking, right? This is when the uh, crown is pulled out. This is when it's pushed back in starts back up again we pull the crown back out not bad it hasn't broken yet okay so i replaced what i could with glass so that you can see what's happening a little bit better and uh yeah i think this is good to be replaced directly into our watch mechanism there we go that turned out pretty good let's punch that out and we'll get back to that in a moment so now let's actually work on the crown itself. Okay, so I've been thinking about this for quite a while, and I think it would be cool if the crown looked something a little bit like this, right? So we've got a heart of the sea inside an item frame, and that is on the back of a note block. So basically, you can wind the watch, right? That will actually start moving the sand while it is uh, depressed. And then when you pull it out, Basically, you click this, which will activate our uh, observer down here. Then something visual will happen with this. Probably all these blocks will be pushed out. And then winding this will then change the time. So how are we going to do that? I mean, firstly, we've got to have a comparator output out of here, right? And that's going to go into a piece of redstone. And that redstone is going to have to be read by an observer of some kind something like this. But then also this pulse here needs to be carried somewhere. So obviously this observer can't be pushed out, but I'm hoping that if the rest of this is pushed out, it doesn't look too, too ugly. And let's see, how are we going to route it to all of these? Okay, I mean, that's something. So let's see what that looks like. And you can spin this and you can honestly, what would it look like if it was just the corners? Yeah, actually, you know what? Just the corners is perfectly fine. So don't need that one. And these two are perfectly fine. So there we go. And then we have our winding. I think that is pretty good. Also, I wish this could be like parallel to the watch's face that you can, you know, see it move and you can maybe interact with it from the top. But unfortunately, you can't read an item frame when it's like that. Like if it's on the top face of a block like this, it unfortunately just can't be read no matter what. So yeah, unfortunately, 
this is all we've got. All right, so let's start hooking up some of the outputs. All right, so first off, the hacking. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. Now, as for why I'm using slime blocks like this, I just think it looks cool. All right, you know, we're making a mechanical watch here. Might as well have as many moving parts as possible, right? Look at that. Oops. Look at that. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, so things are going okay so far. Um, as you can see, when the crown is spun while it is closed, it is not adjusting the time. But when you pull the crown out, this block gets put down here, and spinning the crown actually does affect the time, as you can see. In fact, if I fly all the way up here, you'll see the minute hand go forward. And it does actually interact with the hour hand as well. If we just keep on moving it in this direction, there you go. You can see the hour hand move as well. So they are still connected. Push the crown back in and the time no longer advances. As you can see, that redstone line there is no longer blinking. But of course, when the crown is in and I'm winding this up, it should actually be adding sand to the system, which unfortunately is way over there. I'm thinking that if I move at least one of these cogs like to kind of wrap around, then I could probably put the mainspring uh, just over here, a lot closer to the crown, which I would very much like to do. Unfortunately though, that does sound like a lot of work. But hey, you know what? It's gonna be a lot prettier than running an entire line of slime blocks and stuff all the way down here. So, I'm gonna do it. So now we have our mainspring over here that's connected to our first gear and then that's connected to our escape wheel and our escapement here and that's all connected back up to our watch face here. Now the keen eye among you may have noticed that I got rid of a gear which does actually decrease the quote unquote battery life of this watch just a little bit. If I remember correctly the runtime of the original design was somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred and some hours and uh, this actually cuts it down all the way to, I, if I remember correctly, again, around seven hours. I, I could redo the math, but truly, I, I can't really be bothered. But actually, I think it's a bit of a blessing in disguise, right? Because we want to see this sand tower actually deplete and then get replenished every time you wind the watch. Speaking of which, yeah, uh, that doesn't do anything yet, so let's go ahead and hook that up. Okay, so first test of the winding. Let's see if I... Oh, for some reason it gets stuck. Does it need to be three ticks? Maybe it does need to be three ticks. Let's try that one more time. I don't think that broke anything, so let's go. Huh, you know what? For some reason, this one always pulses. It's kind of strange. Oh, right, it's because the retraction is instant, isn't it? So let's see if we can add maybe a repeater down here that might help out. Okay, so that should probably fix things, right? There we go. And now we're getting one sand per turn. Now this is the part that I'm a little scared of, but I think I can still get it to survive it. So if I just spam this, yeah, it's not breaking anything. I mean, it's certainly not, it's not loving it, but it is surviving. 
And then of course, our all important test of pulling the crown out. There we go. You can see that this magenta block is put in place so that the minute hand can be affected. And if we follow it all the way down here, you'll see that this piston has actually been moved out of the way. So if we go ahead and return back up here and give this a crank, there we go. This one does not activate, but this one does. And if we push the crown back in and wind it one time, you'll see that this does not get affected at all, but we do summon a piece of sand back up to the top. Oh yeah, and of course I can wind the watch while it's running without interrupting it at all. So we want one more sand. There we go. It's making its way back up the bubble elevator and onto the stack. So let's make our way back to the snapshot and make this thing look a whole lot better. All right, so we are back in the snapshot. It's time to put the leads back in. I'm not gonna hold you too long for this part, but yeah, I'm planning hopefully to fill this entire face with powdered snow and just have the leads visible. And you know, obviously the chicken in the middle. You can see that the crown is pulled out. We're no longer stopping the watch through artificial means. This is all just a functional watch at this point. If I push the crown back in, this would start back up. So let's go ahead and redo that face. Now I do want to point out a couple of things that are potentially uh, quite cheaty, I must admit. First off, this is powdered snow that we have here, which usually means that this chicken would fall through, but just because it's no AI, it's actually floating on top of this and it can't be pushed or affected or anything like that from the leads, so it does just stay there. Secondly, these snow golems are also floating. As you can see, there's a lot of air inside these composters. Well, that's just because uh, if they weren't floating, then these leads would just disappear into the floor and you wouldn't be able to see them actually connect to the snow golems. And yeah, these guys can still be pushed around laterally, but they won't fall into this air gap. And that's, that's just a, a property of no AI and definitely requires commands. Now that I think about it, I think this middle guy doesn't even need to be a chicken, does he? So let's just, I'm actually gonna get rid of him and, and uh, make them all snow golems. There we go. <laughs> they're, actually, they're actually quite cute looking at each other like that. So without further ado, let's start this back up and see how much better this thing looks. Pushing the crown in, the second hand starts going. And I mean, dude, it truly is hard to believe that this is actually vanilla Minecraft. Um, there are obviously there are commands involved with uh, these mobs here, but I mean, look at that watch face. And if we go down below, you'll see these gears turning. You'll see this minecart going back and forth. You have the sand column. You have this crown as well, which looks um uh, okay. If I'm being honest, it looks okay. I said this last video, folks, but I could stare at this all day long. So let's do that. Now, believe it or not, this is not the final episode of this series. You see, as we were going on this journey together, members of my Discord server have been hard at work on their own designs. And well, they are way too cool to pass up. So get subscribed if you want to see some other awesome mechanical watch designs. And if you want to be featured in the next video, join my Discord server at the link in the description. That's also where you'll find this world download right here if you want to modify or improve my design. I look forward to seeing what you all cook up.